It's uh, incredibly nice to be in your country. Uh, unfortunately, our uh, cultures and our languages are so different that it's impossible to get your feelings through your language as probably you cannot get my feelings through my original language. My, my native language is, Italia, is Italian and I can present myself in a few words in, in my language. Buonasera, io sono Italo Vignoli. So this is how my language looks uh, and it's so dif different from yours. But I think uh, what makes uh, uh, free open source software unique is that it can put together different cultures and different background uh, in a way that is absolutely transparent. Yesterday at the dinner, uh, we had people from uh, uh, at least two, three continents, and uh, we had people from uh, several countries, and there was no feeling of difference between us. And that, I think, is the end uh, of different religions, because we had uh, Muslims, we had Christians, we had uh, Buddhists from, uh, and probably others that I don't know from, uh, from Asia. Uh, but there's no uh, real barrier between ourselves. So it's, I'm proud to be speaking here. I hope it won't be the last time that someone from, uh, let's call it the core of TDF, will, uh, will visit your country. Uh, you're warmly invited to visit Europe when possible. And when you do that, drop us a line. We will be happy to show the best of Europe. Uh, this is not a touristic uh, <laughs> advertising, of course. And uh, I just want to start with a, with a few maps. Uh, on, many people know that my background is in geography. I'm a geographer. So, uh, and I'm in technology and software just by chance. Uh, in addition to the fact that they don't pay geographers and you have to get a salary at the end of the month. Uh, so I start with a few maps. Uh, maps that some people have already seen that will show you what the uh, lack of investment in open source software have created in terms of uh, unbalance in the world. So uh, this is the typical map that you everyone knows where uh, each country is represented by the surface. So, of course, uh, uh, Japan is uh, similar in, uh, in surface, is a little bit bigger, but this is my country, Italy. Is, uh, Japan is a little bit bigger, but not that much. If we switch to population, you see that Japan is a lot bigger than Italy because there are more Japanese than Italian. But for instance, look at India, look at China, uh, how big they are because the number of people is there. And look at how smaller is South America, how small is Canada, that is a huge country. And uh, let's go to something that is interesting for us. It's uh, export of software licenses. Okay? So you have a, a big one, which uh, I will not, in, will not even tell the name because everyone knows that. <laughs> this is Ireland. Ireland in Europe is kind of a bridge between the States and Europe. So all large European, all large American corporations have an office in Ireland that import their software and then export the software to all of Europe because Ireland has very low taxes. Uh, you, you think that this is, what is this bubble? This is Suriname. Suriname is a very tiny country in South America that has the same function of Ireland for South America. So it's a, it's a, it's a former Dutch, uh, Dutch uh, colony where taxes are 4%. So of course, uh, Microsoft and Oracle, they, they ship to Suriname, and from Suriname they ship to the other countries in South America. Uh, so this is really unbalanced. See where Africa is. 
see where all your countries are. I mean, it's like you're disappearing from, from the world. Uh, and, uh, and this is unfortunately, this is an unfortunate situation. It's not because we want Americas not to export software, but we would like to have uh, a more balanced situation. And now look at the import. So the import is exactly the opposite. <laughs> look at ja how Japan is big, look at how Italy is big. Ireland is big because they import a lot of software to export a lot of software. And uh, I can show you where the United States are. United States are, are one pixel line between Mexico and Canada. <laughs> so they basically, they don't exist in terms of import of software licenses. Uh, and uh, let's just think and imagine how the world would be different if uh, there was more free software, which is usually developed locally, or if not entirely developed locally, is partially done locally. So this is something that when we started the project, so this is, is our paper plane. This is, uh, we started in 2010 and we said we have a dream in 2020, we would like to have 200 million users and we would like to have made a dent in the software industry. We, I think we have met it, we have already reached, according to our estimated, the, the target, but we're still behind in, uh, in our idealistic uh, objective. Uh, we have a, an heritage of 10 years, open office, uh, many of the people that have founded the LibreOffice project were active in the open office community. I know that in uh, Japan, uh, uh, some people were active, uh, but some uh, have left uh, or are not active anymore. Uh, but the idea when uh, we started was to build on a very strong history. We have a strong background. Uh, uh, open Office was born in 1984. If you will look at, back at the history when Marco Burris uh, uh, created, released the, the first product. Uh, so uh, it's, uh, we have almost uh, 30 and close to 40 years of history behind us. Uh, open Office uh, was started in the year 2000. And uh, uh, there, in the history of the project, there are some, some issues that were uh, then tackled and solved uh, by LibreOffice. For instance, this is OpenOffice in 2000, the year 2000. So this is the, basically the code and the repositories. And in 2005, probably in Hamburg developers, they eat a lot of fat stuff, so OpenOffice was like this was a little bit uh, fat, uh, and uh, in 2006, uh, uh, at the Lyon conference, there was a presentation by the open office guide, and they said, okay, we understand that the community is not happy in some areas, so we will reduce code complexity. Not done. Done by LibreOffice. We will improve patch handling. At the time, uh, the, there was the famous patch from Kohei Yoshida that sat for 28 months before being merged. So a patch that sits in a, in, a, in a branch for 28 months is something that is really unacceptable. Luckily, the, the patch was so advanced that after 28 months it was still good, but 28 months are uh, one uh, generation in technology and then mentoring newbies, and this is something that with LibreOffice we have managed to do. So go quickly through the history, in 2009 Oracle acquired Sun, the, uh, the, the people in the community were already a little bit unhappy on how Sun was managing the situation, so the we quickly decided that it was the, the right time to, to fork, to do something to 
renew what the it was impossible to manage that and we tried to be to do this so open office was here and the reality that at that time was the risk of abandonment by oracle was huge and we were right when we said that it was abandoned so we have launched libreoffice and you know that libreoffice today has a as a record of development and releases over close to 10 years. We have uh, regularly released uh, at a major release twice a year. We had a regularly minor release every month, month and a half. Uh, so the product is maintained regularly. And uh, we had, uh, uh, in, in my religion, uh, they had a last supper. But, and that, that was not a lucky situation. So we, uh, we prefer to say that we had the first supper it was in Budapest on September 2, 2010. These are basically the people that founded the, the project. Uh, there were a few others that were already around the project, and for instance, Lothar is one of them. But these are the guys that really discussed uh, uh, how to put together the, 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 new, the new project. Uh, you may know some of them. Uh, this is Florian Effenberger. This is Christoph Noack. Uh, he's the guy that chose green as the color. Christoph did the design, then uh, he had a baby. He changed his work, uh, so he, he left the project. But his contribution was fundamental. Charles Schulz from France uh, is still around. Uh, uh, Candy, or Jan Olesowski. Candy is a lot simpler. Tost and Berens, Michael Mix, Callum McNamara, uh, this is me, Sophie, uh, I don't remember his name, is, uh, 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 he, 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 anyway, was one, he, he changed work as well after. Andrea, yeah, ex exactly, Kornaus, Olivier Hallo, and uh, Life Lodal from uh, Copenhagen. So we, we, we were the guys that did the fork. And uh, so we created, this was the announcement, uh, and uh, we said, you know, we have the target in 2020, which is nice, it's next year. So we are nine years on the road. And these are then uh, the history, these are the forks, uh, you know that then there is Apache Open Office, uh, the unfortunate story of IBM, uh, choosing a, a competitive product with a, with a free software product. But corporations do not, at least in Europe, I don't know how it is in Japan, but at least in Europe and in the United States, corporations do not like community. And uh, they especially do not like community members as me. I'm very straightforward when I, I and if I think that you're doing something wrong, I tell you that you're doing something wrong. So I repeatedly told Sun during the previous years that they were doing something wrong. And they didn't really appreciate that much my transparency. So we, we reverted the paradigm. This is Open Office, a, a, a company that protects the project. So it's like uh, when it rains, if you are under the umbrella, you, you don't get wet. If you are outside the umbrella, you get wet. Uh, we, we reverted the umbrella. Uh, this is the concept of the mixing bowl. So in, in the United States, they say that if you put all the ingredients of a salad and you mix them very well, the salad is better. So it uh, has a better flavor. Uh, in, in, at least in, in my country, we say that uh, we jump on a, on, a, on a boat and we have all, everyone has to row in the same direction. It's probably something similar in other European countries. I don't know which kind of metaphor you use in Asia, but the concept is simple. This is the community that decides and where to go, and everyone is empowered to provide this contribution. Uh, this uh, was the home page, the first home page, uh, and uh, the founding principle are copyleft license. We use uh, now we, we went from LGPL to MPL. No contributor agreement. 
based on meritocracy, governance by the community and independence from, from vendors. Uh, in, in our studies, not uh, and uh, in the uh, board of director, there cannot be more than 30% of votes from uh, representative of a single company. And uh, uh, we, when, when we launched, many people saw our project like a kind of protest against Oracle. It was not a protest against Oracle. It was a project to build something new. We were uh, some. There was an article on, on in UK that said that we were the strikers, so we, we wanted to strike against Oracle. No, that's completely wrong. We wanted to promote free software, user freedom, document freedom, open standards, and of course to develop LibreOffice. Then we have added another project that is uh, document liberation. That is the project that takes care of filters to import and export uh, documents. And these are the numbers. So we have 206 members. We have, and uh, by the way, I know that in the, the audience today there are there is people that is not yet TDF members. And uh, so I expect by the end of next week to see the application of all the people that are not TDF members and are sitting here. I'm a close friend of the. Uh, President of the Membership Committee, he's Italian as well, his name is Gabriele Ponzo, so I will tell Gabriele, Gabriele, tell me who has sent the application, who has not sent the application, we know where you live. Okay? <laughs> and this is not really, a, but, but take it seriously. <laughs> And uh, our main asset are developers. We don't have many, many developers from Asia. I hope there will be more. There are some. Thank you for your work because uh, developers are precious. Without developers, there won't be the project because there won't be a product. Because the, the reality is that we have a fantastic product that gives us the opportunity of uh, not only being here and talk between us, but also to go to governments and talk to governments uh, and uh, be proud of what we propose to governments because we have a product that is able to replace any proprietary software with an advantage for the people that use it. This is the number of developers. Uh, if you look at the, the the dark green uh, are the old developers, so the, those that were already in the project. But as you can see, this is from 2010 to end of 2016. Then we stopped counting them because there are so many that it doesn't make... You know, at first there was the, the, the criticism from some that said, oh, they will not attract developers, they will miss developers. So we, we, we don't lack developers, this is the reality. Uh, after we were at close 1,200 developers committing to the product, we said we stopped counting them because it doesn't make any sense. What we wanted to show, it was already in this, uh, in this chart. And what are doing developers? We have a, a core of 40 paid or unpaid, but mostly paid by companies uh, that are do the uh, more solid work. We have a number of regulars and uh, uh, some of the developers that are in this room are the regulars. They do a very important work. And then we have occasionals, but occasionals that replace it, them each other every year. So at the end we have around 300 developers on a, on a yearly basis, which means that the product has a very solid background. And these uh, are commits this year, in 2019, as you can see, of course, there are Saturdays, Sundays, uh, vacations for people, but it's uh, rather uh, solid. Uh, this uh, is just before the announcement of uh, LibreOffice 6.2. That was uh, So, of course, there is a spike of activities around announcements. And these are contribution by organization. So uh, many developers are employed by companies. 
So the, this is uh, the, the patches from Collabora, these are from Red Hat. Unknown uh, is not a nice way to say volunteers, it would be better volunteers, but as they don't, they are not backed by a company, they, we, can, we, we use the word unknown. Then there is CIB, uh, TDF are uh, people employed by TDF, and then uh, there are small chunks done by, by others. But what is important to, to uh, see in this slide is that we don't, there is not one single company or group doing more than 50%. That would put the, 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 the project at a risk because if the 50% goes away, then the rest of the project would be, not be able to keep the project alive. And we are at our sixth, our fourth development cycle. We started at 3.3 .3, and that was code cleaning. Then uh, four was code refactoring. So we redeveloped what was already in the product but was not really optimized. Then we work at the user interface. We still work at the user interface, but the reality is that we, at the six, we have productivity, uh, although we are not happy with the mobile application, but LibreOffice is the only free uh, office suite that it's running on every platform. So it means that it's running on uh, Windows, Mac OS, Linux, the cloud, and mobile. The only one that gets closed because misses only Linux uh, is Microsoft Office, but all the other miss uh, the mobile or something uh, in, uh, in the other, so they don't have a cloud version. And uh, LibreOffice Online, there will be, there, are, there have been talks today, and uh, it's very important. Of course, uh, we have to explain to people that we, we, we uh, give the engine, the, the enabling technology, we don't provide the infrastructure simply because the infrastructure has a cost that is impossible to stand for a not-for-profit foundation. And we do amazingly well uh, uh, quality. So we use Coverity Scan, which is a weekly service that allows us to clean the code. We use OSFAS from Google. We use all the tools that are uh, available to improve the quality of the code. If you look at the numbers, if you look at the uh, Coherity Scan reports, LibreOffice uh, is uh, probably the productivity software with the, the lowest number of uh, issues for 1,000 lines of code. We are well below names like Firefox, we are well below names uh, like uh, Thunderbird, uh, Chromium, uh, which are considered very stable software. This means that, of course, it doesn't mean that we are bug-free software. Bug-free software does not exist. But we have a very solid foundation for the code. And of course the community is uh, as developers are a strong asset, the community is the second one, because uh, if you don't have developers, you don't have the product, but if you don't have the community, you don't have language versions, you don't have promotion in local, in local markets. So the community is fantastic, and uh, is something that uh, we should all be proud of being part of. And this is the community in, uh, uh, sorry, Nigeria is missing, but I will add immediately. Um, uh, it's impossible to know all the places where we are present. This is, in some cases, our best guesses based on uh, information that we can get from the network. Of course, Africa is, uh, is one of the top uh, priorities for the for the foundation because uh, uh, we know that there is a lot a need for software in that in that uh, continent and uh, uh, the problem is that uh, it's probably difficult in terms of culture to explain some uh, some realities but as you know as you see uh, the the communities in, uh, in all of the Americas, 
In Central America, I, I think we have a community that there's no evidence, like uh, in, uh, in, in some other countries, but in Asia we are almost in, in, in any country. And uh, it's important to develop uh, where we don't see a community and it's important to develop the community in countries where the community is not to the level of, as in other countries. For instance, we were discussing about how to raise the community in India and uh, I think that China as well uh, uh, is, uh, is important. Uh, luckily we have uh, Chinese speaking people in the community. They are Taiwanese but they speak the same language. So of course this can help a lot because you, we, we have already a basis for uh, the, the, the Chinese community. Uh, India I, I think is a complex uh, uh, country because it's so big, uh, so many people, uh, they have uh, many local languages, so it's, uh, and it's difficult, in, uh, in addition to this, uh, in uh, being at these conferences for us is so important because we learn a lot on how the community works uh, outside our original uh, community. So Europe is such a small, if you look, this is the entire continent is uh, smaller than China, smaller than Russia, is probably smaller than Australia, and this is a, is a continent. So of course in, in Europe, where the project was born, uh, community is really looks alike in every country. The, the differences are really minor, apart from languages, but differences in the, way, in the way you develop the community are very small. While the community works in different ways in, uh, in your geographies, just because we have uh, very strong but very different cultures. And we respect all the cultures. I was in Indonesia last year and I think that the Indonesians have done a wonderful work uh, in growing the community. They started two years and a half, three years ago, but now they have a community that is self-sustaining. They are organizing events, local events. Uh, they are attracting more people because, uh, of course, in a community you have people that come and go and you cannot bet on the fact that people is staying here forever. And this uh, is uh, uh, the activity of the community. These are, uh, just to give you, this is the core. These are the regular people and these are the casual people. This is based just on uh, the commit or the number of emails that are sent. Uh, this is the, the dashboard of the Document Foundation. You can access it at dashboard.documentfoundation.org. So you can check it for yourself and you can filter the data to see uh, according to your interest. And of course, last asset is LibreOffice. Uh, open source software is, uh, is now adopted by the majority, but still we have to do a lot to make people aware about open source software. If we look at Google Trends, uh, uh, LibreOffice is this one, uh, so these are the last 12 months. Uh, uh, Brazil is the country where most research are coming from, but of course, uh, if we look at the at more details, this is very general, it's Google Trends, so it's based on searches. But if we look at other uh, measurement methods, for instance, uh, in uh, in Asia, you see Japan uh, having probably the largest share, and I will show the, the, the slides about Asia in a few minutes. Uh, user base estimate. As I said, we are estimating around 200 million users. So this uh, is uh, more or less how we estimate the number. So there are between 2 and 3 billion users. Uh, PC users, we say that we have 100% of desktop Linux. Maybe it's not 100, but it's 99 by 9. Uh, we have 10% of desktop Windows and 10% of desktop Mac OS. So if you sum all 
the, the figure is 236 million, and we say, okay, we are conservative, we say we have 200 million. It's probably 100 million are unique users, the other 100 million are uh, using also another software. So they may be using Microsoft Office or other Office Suites or other specific software. We provide two versions, uh, fresh versus still. We deliberately do not use the, the word uh, stable because the reality is that they are both stable. But the new, let's say that one is newer than the other or if you want the still uh, is the more tested by users. Of course, when we suggest which version to use, uh, we usually suggest the older one because uh, not because uh, the newer one creates issues, but because you never know who are the users. So it's better to start uh, with a more tested version and then, if necessary, move to the next one, but instead of the opposite. And uh, this uh, is more or less uh, gives you the numbers. Remember that on LibreOffice still uh, we have LTS options. So there are two companies, they are both sitting on the advisory board. They provide an LTS version. So if you meet a government or a corporation that wants to get a product that is optimized for their need, they're not getting a better product, they get a product that is optimized, so they have uh, uh, support, they have uh, backporting of patches. Uh, for instance, we, we do not backport patches over nine months. So when, when the software is nine months old, uh, you, you don't get any, any security patch anymore. While on, M on LTS version you get security patch backported for five years. So let's say that you could update the software after five years instead of doing it every six, nine months. That can be a, an issue in some cases. This is LibreOffice Online Writer. This is LibreOffice Online Calc. Uh, they work. They work amazingly well. They're solid and they save in ODF, and ODF is important. What can we do in the future? The future, we, we can together, but only if we do that together, we can really build a global ecosystem. And uh, contributing means sharing. Uh, it's, uh, we are all, uh, and let me make a note about the language here. Uh, Unfortunately, we don't speak the same language all over the world. This is in one sense a pity because we have communication issues, but it's the beauty because each language represents our culture. So we are forced to use English as a kind of global language. English is not my native language. I'm a decent English speaker, but English is not my native language. With my wife, she's there, we speak Italian. We don't speak English between ourselves. So uh, I totally understand uh, and the effort that you make looking how you write your language, the effort that you make, uh, it's amazing to speak English that is based on our Western way of writing. So uh, we are amazed by the fact that you are managed to speak such a lang language, but don't be shy. We want to, if you know three words of English, use those three words of English. We want to understand you. Don't, don't consider English as a barrier. It is not. If necessary, start to do science. We Italians are very good at <coughs> dancing on the floor, so <laughs> do the same. Because that, you know, communicating is more important than judging the others on language skills. And uh, let's look at a few numbers on Asia. So this, uh, these are visits to the download page. 
I can give you visits to other, but this is important because it's visits to download page. So these are the continent. As you can see, Europe is still quite high. Asia is, di is divided in East Asia, Central Asia. Uh, we have to improve because still uh, Europe and North America are still they have the, 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 the lion's share. These are from Asia uh, area. So you have East Asia, Central Asia, South Asia, Southeast Asia, and Western Asia. Uh, of course, uh, uh, this probably tells you a lot more than what it tells to me, because you know the reality of your continent. And these are the countries. Of course, I had to create an others because there is a very long tail of uh, countries, but you have India, then you have Japan, and Indonesia. Then you have China, Turkey, Philippines, Taiwan, Thailand, South Korea, Saudi Arabia, Malaysia, Hong Kong, Vietnam, Pakistan, Singapore, and Israel, and the other one are 6%. As you can see, there are unbalanced in terms of, uh, so this does not reflect the, the potential number of users of your countries. Of course, uh, I'm happy to see Japan here, but Japan has one-tenth of the inhabitants of India. So India should have a lot more downloads than Japan. Not be, I mean, don't stop downloading you, but let's have the Indians increasing the, the downloads. And uh, that's, I like what this guy, because I, I'm an old man, so uh, most of the times uh, I'm the oldest in, uh, in, in the building. Uh, I don't know if I'm the oldest here because uh, uh, I'm not able to judge uh, you uh, as I would be able to judge a European, but I'm 65. So I don't think there are many younger people than me and I think uh, you're never too old to, to have another goal uh, and to dream a, a new dream. So I want to stay here for years again to help younger people to grow up in the community. I think that it's very important for someone that has experience to transfer the experience to the younger people. So my dream, this is FOSS today. This is uh, people that know free and open source software. These are those that use but they, in many cases, they use, but they don't know. For instance, uh, uh, many use VLC on their mobile phones and they don't think it's free software. And these are the people that refuse. And my dream is tomorrow to say, these are the people that know, these are the people that use, and these are the people that refuse. This, I mean, we cannot get rid of those, unfortunately. Uh, and uh, that's all for my part of the speech. And uh, there is Lothar now that will add a few important remarks about uh, certification and how to build a business outside, around the uh, LibreOffice. So, thank you very much. Um, before I introduce myself, my name is Lothar Becker. I want to tell you that I have now three challenges. The first one is, it's my first stay in Asia in my life. And I'm very honored to be here in the LibreOffice Conference Asia. And the second one is, it's also the first time in my life that I present, do a presentation, and I'm used to do presentation before my wife. <laughs> so please be kind with me, she will judge me afterwards. And the third one is, to speak after Italo, it's, it's, a, channel, it's a challenge because uh, he's so, so good in, in making presentations and 
I won't stress you too much. I will hurry up a little bit to join the, the six o'clock. So first of all, let's have a look a little bit on the business side. I want to speak a little bit uh, about uh, certifying as a LibreOffice professional and why this is a win-win-win situation for the community. And uh, uh, perhaps let me have a few words to myself. This is all the formal stuff, but um, as Italo mentioned, the history of uh, Star Office and Open Office, uh, me and my, my company, uh, Lease applications was the first uh, migration partner of Sun uh, in uh, Europe. So we have done the first or one of the first uh, migration projects in the early 2000s. It was 2001, something about this, that uh, we um, have uh, gathering together with the, the, the staff of Sun and um, spoke with them about. How can we uh, bring um, open office, start first start office and then open office uh, to uh, professional users as a uh, deployment in a professional environment? And this is now 70, 18 years we have changed the product to LibreOffice. So this is the track record I have in business with and around open office and LibreOffice. So let me focus on the community and uh, I want to bring in um, a part of the community which is not always recognized but which we all know that it is an, a very important part of the community. It's the, the third group of stakeholders. It's the ecosystem around um, the product we have. The first uh, group are First and foremost, uh, all users around them, they are private, they are professional, even if they uh, use LibreOffice offline, as we know everybody, and uh, the new one since a few years online, LibreOffice online, we have heard it uh, a lot of times. And the, the second one is the, uh, the community, we often spoke about the community, it's the worldwide participants, to develop the product, to the product, everybody who brings in uh, some contributions to the product is uh, meant that we speak with the community. But there's also the ecosystem which is needed uh, to guarantee the support, the professional support and services for these professional environments. Uh, what we want to discuss. So, as we start conversation uh, for thinking about business, thinking about business in, uh, also in Asia, there was the question, uh, how do we get business around LibreOffice? Is it like a uh, genesis? Is it from dust coming out? Perhaps Italy is saying bang, and uh, there are some uh, big migration projects to LibreOffice with professional deployments. And there are some uh, chicken who are doing the uh, this ecosystem, and everything is fine for the next uh, hundreds of years. You know, we all know. I, I don't want to um, to harm any religious uh, feelings by that, but we all know that this is not the kind or the way it will happen. So, what could be the way it could happen? And this is um, what I want to, to, to mention in this uh, talk. Um, what brings LibreOffice and some kind of community we have with some kind of business and ecosystem and some, some kind of projects uh, to a very vital one where we have chicken, where we have eggs and uh, growing up uh, more and more over the time. And the question is, what are the catalysts, what are the criteria to grow that up to have a vital um, uh, ecosystem around repos? As 
I recap my slides this uh, morning, I was a little bit concerned about this slide. Because to bring in here in Asia the role model of Europe or in this case Germany, I felt a little bit that this is misplaced. Why? Well, ecosystem with and around LibreOffice is services. It's most about services support. And what we discovered the last, last two days is that the culture of services here in Asia is a lot higher and better than that we have in Europe. So I'm feeling a little bit concerned to bring in this uh, example of how, how it can work but perhaps we can take the catalysts, I've marked them in green, the draw of a screen, uh, color, which are the criteria, which I think could be uh, catalysts for bringing up uh, more business around. So let's have a look, have a look uh, what has happened in, in, in Germany. There were some anchor persons and uh, some local community there, uh, which start doing some business. So it's all about you and me. There must be some person who say, yes, we do it. And that's very, very important. In the German case, uh, it's all mentioned some names. It was Thomas Krumbay, Jacqueline, Florian, uh, as we all know, Thorsten, and other persons around that. There were, or oh, beloved or not beloved, an anchor company who care about the product. It was in the early stage, uh, the Star Division. Uh, afterwards, it was Sun. Uh, I have a lot of talk with, uh, with uh, Michael Bemmer uh, uh, around these, all these community issues. Um, see, see it as a good or bad catalyst, but there, was, there were anchor companies who want to make business with it. Third one there were lighthouse projects. Um, not many projects, but uh, I remember that in the early 2000s, I was talking to the uh, city of Munich about the whole um, migration to Linux and uh, in this stage open office. And it, um, it ran over years that they decide to do that. So, some lighthouse projects are important that other which are thinking about to migrate see that there are some role models for it. Uh, especially in, in our German case, uh, there were a lot of public affairs um, administrations who were thinking about uh, uh, turning uh, away from Microsoft Office to LibreOffice. And why did they? because there was a depression in the ecosystem. There was somewhere a cost sensitivity, which we heard in all over uh, talks I heard today, the cost sensitivity or about uh, license costs, awareness about a uh, vendor login with, in the long consequences, are also cost uh, arguments, and um, awareness about the open document format technical issue uh, to, come to, to be a, a side of these uh, vendor login. So this, this were catalysts. There were some people, as I mentioned, uh, besides some who want to make uh, business with it, who sell services support uh, for, for uh, the uh, software. And afterwards, uh, we uh, developed this certifying um, process for um, acknowledge some companies, some people uh, in these companies um, that they were uh, doing a qualified service for this product. And uh, this is the only thing, the only thing, if you see the others, uh, you, can, you can check for, for Asia. I think there are some anchor persons here in the room for Asia who are promoting these uh, products like uh, Franklin 
like Shinji here in Japan, like others, sorry to be not to mention everybody, but there are eight persons and the, and the local community who is a catalyst for that. I think I've heard some anchor companies or some lighthouse projects as the CTC from Taiwan, as uh, fans from uh, Indonesia, and others we heard today, uh, which, are, which could be the lighthouse projects as catalysts here for the ecosystem in Asia. I don't know if there's something like a kind of depression in, in, in Asia, but I know, and you have mentioned it in, in the talks, that there's a cost sensitive and a sensitivity for the lock-in uh, issue in Asia. So what we can do from Europe or from all the community, the ecosystem community, we could help you with these certifying issues. Let me give just a short introduction to this certifying, LibreOffice certifying um, process. If you were interesting, I um, can tell you that we have tomorrow these business workshops and uh, uh, refuse stations, so ask me questions about that tomorrow. If I uh, uh, please be kind, I, I can explain the whole process in this uh, few minutes, but just a few words. Uh, there are four profiles for um, but we think there are four profiles for certifying. Uh, there are professional certified developers, there are uh, professional uh, migration consultants, there are trainers, professional trainers with a, a known uh, profile, and perhaps somewhere in the future we will have a known um, profile for certified support um, uh, consultant. But uh, we cover this uh, support uh, profile, I think, a part of it in the migration and a part of it in the trainer skills. And uh, this is, uh, um, these, these are the profiles about the uh, kind of uh, process to get uh, certified. The uh, profile of development is a little bit slightly different from the others, from the other two. Developers are uh, uh, invited by the engineering steering committee, so they are recognized for giving uh, contributions to the source code. And uh, if you have done some of these contributions, they recognize you as a, as a developer who can master the code. And then you will be invited, and uh, uh, if you want to be listed as certified developer, and uh, if you say yes, you will be listed. And quite different is the certification for migration and training. Um, to be short in the process, we certify people, not companies. And uh, as a consultant for migration or as a trainer, you should have some experience in this area. Uh, for training or for uh, migrating um, to LibreOffice, then you, you should show uh, these experience, for example, with some documents to the committee, uh, applicate to, uh, to this certifying role with these documents, and it will be reviewed by the committee, and if it is acknowledged that it seems to be uh, that you, have, you are a little bit experienced in, in this area, you get invited to, to do such a review session, which we are doing tomorrow here in, in these rooms with three or four candidates. And um, if, if the committee of reviewers, normally three or four um, out of these committees, say yes, we trust this uh, quality of service of this person, you get uh, these uh, certified. So why it is, in short words, why is this? Helping? Why is this a win-win, uh, a win-win-win in the community for the stakeholders? So I think it's easy to understand. Out of the customer side, of the professional user side, it's good to have um, such an uh, such contacts, such a list where you, if you need such a um, uh, certified uh, service 
where you can have contact persons, where you have uh, you can ask, and you know that they are valued with uh, um, with trust from the community. So mainly the uh, the customer, the users are gaining um, uh, a quality of services out of these uh, certification areas. The community, everybody who is in the contribution uh, group, the typical win is that we get out of these certified people certainly um, ideas how we can develop the product ahead. Especially ahead in, in the way for using it in a professional environment. Integration issues, compatibility issues and so on. And the third one, the third win, is typically for the applicant, because you as certified uh, people um, are listed uh, in an official list of, of the TDF, of the LibreOffice uh, online website, uh, where everybody can see that you are certified migrator, certified trainer, or something like this. And certainly the win is working in such an awesome community like we enjoy here. So, domo arigato. Do we take questions or? One or two questions, if there are. One or two questions. Okay, it's six o'clock. So I think if you have questions and take part tomorrow, come to me, come to Italo, and we will help you with this uh, application. Thank you very much. <laughs>